Hey everybody, it is a beautiful sunny Friday here in Minneapolis and today I am actually working on repairing the Pearl C4S4 after a little mishap on a parking lot the other afternoon while picking my son up at school. Uh, turns out it was the outer ball joint that had liberated itself and yeah, luckily I have a set of those in the boxes in my parts stash. So I'm in the process of removing the bad one right now and I'll take you out there. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I've already removed the inner control arm bolt back here. And you can see there's a uh, Audi lug bolt hanging out of that. And that's gonna be the little trick we use to, uh, you just thread in the lug bolt a little bit and use that to pull out the sleeve that goes through the center of that arm. So we'll do that here in a minute. Right now we're looking at this one. That's a 24 inch uh, bolt on the side of that. So I gotta get that off and then we're gonna get this uh, control arm free, hopefully. Uh, and I should say the inner one here has this retainer plate. That is a 16, 16 millimeter. Okay, we managed to get the uh, <laughs> outer control arm bushing bolt out of there after a lot of work. It was, uh, definitely tough to come off at the end there and now I basically have what's left of the ball joint stuck in here that I need to liberate so I'm going to work on that hopefully that's not too much of a hassle I've got the bolt loose uh, and then this inner control arm with the sleeve and that I think is going to be I know that's going to be fun because I've done a few of these before and that's usually a bit of a fight so like I said we're going to thread in a lug nut into that and then try to wiggle that out. We'll see how it goes. So I quite literally removed this inner sleeve from the control arm faster than I ever have in my life. I've usually had to thread these in and then fight to get them out. And I actually used my impact. I threaded it in real slow and then I just kept spinning it like on, like I'm gonna tighten it, but I pulled down on the impact and it literally just went whoop, came out like butter. I cannot believe that. Should buy a lottery ticket, but I think I just spent all my luck on that bolt. Hey everybody. Okay, so I ended up forgetting to turn the camera on for a lot of the remaining section of the reinstallation of that control arm. Uh, it was in fact, you know, the outer ball joint that had popped. I luckily have a set of control arms in my parts stash pretty much at all times. And so I was able to quickly throw one in, uh, basically just get them all from FCP Euro. That way, if they do fail, they do have a lifetime replacement warranty. So I have ordered two more uh, to kind of replenish, and I'm going to send these original arms back for replacement. And I did look that up, and I discovered that they were installed back in 2015. So that's a pretty good run. <laughs> uh, Minnesota roads do take their toll, and like I said, I had felt the car was... A little bit on the loose side let's you know head clunks and um, in fact just two days prior to that failure I literally just drive it that car was going back and forth about a, a mile and a half and as I turned the corner I was feeling a kind of a pop clunk and I'm like yeah that's outer bushings or something's going I've certainly felt that before that inner control arm um, mount or bushings bad so I wasn't really driving it fast on the highways or anything, uh, just waiting for my complete tie rod assemblies to arrive, more or less, and then I can start the full rebuild. But uh, anyhow, I'm gonna flip the camera around, I'm gonna show you the new TRW control arm and kind of show you what's going on here. Okay, so this one is actually from the passenger side of the car, which will be going on, uh, we've got a couple days of rain going on here, but maybe this weekend I get a chance, I can put this one on, and I will actually, shoot video of the entire process of doing this arm so you can kind of see what's involved and I know I kind of screwed up some of the the bolt sizing or at least I said inch where I meant millimeters and so forth so I'll try to get a, a clean coherent <laughs> replacement of this arm on the pearl car in the upcoming week or so as time permits but this is of course the outer ball joint this is the part that had separated on my other car which in turn caused the front wheel to go into the fender and ironically on this car on the red car it's happened on the passenger side only in that instance it was this inner bolt which it's a good size bolt that goes through here goes through a there's a sleeve that goes in here bolt goes through it and 
I had hit a pothole. I mean, this is many, many years ago, and I was actually going to, uh, for those of you that remember Car of Minnesota, I was going to their warehouse, which was in St. Louis Park, had ironically just come from a job interview at uh, Maplewood Audi at that time. And so I'd driven across the metro, across the freeways, whatnot. And moments before the incident, I, I'd been going, you know, 60 plus miles an hour on a, on a freeway. So luckily, when that one finally failed, it was while I was turning, you know, full lock into a parking space and the bolt cracked and this arm basically was floating. It popped out. So that resulted in a flatbed tow to Anderson Motorsport in Chanhassen, where we, luckily they had one, I believe, and we got it installed and I was able to drive back to North Iowa that night. So that was a time when I, I didn't live here in the cities. And so I was commuting back and forth to meet with clients and whatnot. And there you have it. So this time, Minnesota Roads did a number on the ball joint and it was, it was old and rusty. You could see by that. And that's partially why, you know, I had the whole plan to restore this. In the last couple of years, I hadn't really, normally I go in and I clean all the rust off of these and I keep them painted and clean and I check all the bushings and I'd examined it. Oh, let's see, last fall and it was still okay because I usually get a pry bar and I, you know, look for excessive play and I expect inspect all of the bushings to make sure they're not cracking or anything or not too severely um but potholes do take a, a toll and so this uh this arm is going in the passenger side they're going to do the stabilizer bar mounts and everything and you know basically we'll probably end up dropping the subframe i will say the pearl car does have i have to look back to the records because the pearl car has had the subframe dropped and all the bushings were replaced not terribly long ago i mean it's probably in the f four or five years maybe i don't know i have to look uh, so we'll debate whether or not we're going to redo those again right now but probably will just because ocd <laughs> but uh yeah it's never fun when these fail luckily i purchased all of these from fcp euro and i've already ordered another set to replace them so i've got another set on standby but like i said the set that was on the pearl car was from 2015 and now we've got a brand new set going on so stay tuned for the actual video on how to replace the passenger side i will film and make sure i get everything recorded on this one and i will actually you know tell you all the tools you need all the torque specs for everything and we'll kind of go through that one step by step so It'll take probably four times as long to do it that way, but hopefully it's of some use to those of you that find yourself in a similar situation or you just want to freshen your uh, control arms and whatnot. But the rest of the uh, Pearl Car rebuild will actually happen uh, once I can get this thing out of here. And I'm actually, I've got bringing the fenders back out. I'm going to end up putting the hood back on. Um, I do need to replace this coolant pump but we'll talk about that in a different video related to the d2 but anyway front clip's going to go on this we're going to get some fluids in it service the transmission so that it can leave under its own power then i can at least move it in and out of the garage because right now it's just up on a jack stands and so that uh i've got basically a two-month wait until i can get paint done so i need to have the fenders and hood and bumper all painted ming blue so We'll get this cleared up and out of here hopefully in the next week or two, and then the Pearl car can come in for some repairs, and I can, in a pinch, drive the red one. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the passenger side control arm replacement, hopefully within the next week. We'll talk to you soon.